Here's a cross-sectional schematic of an actual electron microscope. And what I hope you notice about this is that the column itself where the electrons pass, it's a very narrow channel, maybe just a couple millimeters wide. And so all the times that I've drawn scattering and lenses and beams going off at high angles, these were gross exaggerations. In fact, the angles involved in the shifts are very small. Next, notice that the electron microscope is completely shielded all around by lead shielding. And this is because as the electrons hit any material, your sample or perhaps the fluorescent screen at the bottom, or they're deflected and hit the walls of the microscope, high energy electrons will release x-rays. And so for the safety of anybody who might be near this microscope, the lead shielding absorbs the x-rays. Further, you might be surprised to note that within this very complicated electronic machine, there are cooling channels of water pumping through the lenses and all around the microscope to try to maintain a thermal equilibrium. And so electron microscopes have associated with them water chillers. And it's very important that the water temperature and the temperature of the lenses of the microscope remain constant. Microscopes are so sensitive to temperature changes, in fact, that if people walk into the room, if another person walks into the room, their body heat can cause small perturbations in the lenses. Now this mixture of water and high voltages and strong currents create a safety hazard of electrocution. There are stories of microscope water channels degrading and beginning to leak. And so people have come in to see their microscope in the morning and see water pouring out of the microscope. There's other stories of microscopes that were in basements. Usually you place your electron microscope in a basement where the ground is more stable. And there's been terrible storms where these basements flood with water. And so if you go into your microscope room and there's any water on the floor, be very careful because there's an electrocution hazard. We mentioned earlier that there is an asphyxiation hazard associated with electron microscopes. We mentioned that the high tension tank is insulated with a gas, sulfur hexafluoride, that is both odorless and colorless. And so if there's a leak in the compressed sulfur hexafluoride tank, it can fill the room and displace the oxygen and cause an asphyxiation hazard. In addition, cryo-EM is done with lots and lots of liquid nitrogen, cooling the samples, cooling the cryo box within the objective lens. And so there's a lot of liquid nitrogen being used. And if lots of liquid nitrogen evaporates too quickly, for instance, because a doer of liquid nitrogen is tipped over, then that can fill the room and displace the oxygen as well and become a safety hazard. You need to be careful to prevent liquid nitrogen burns. When either storing or retrieving cryo-EM grids, there, there's lots of liquid nitrogen being used and you're pouring it into different chambers and doers. In addition, you're filling doers on the microscope with liquid nitrogen that cool parts of the electron microscope. When you insert the samples, you're sometimes rotating that specimen holder, and it often has a doer of liquid nitrogen. And so in these various events, there's a risk of either pouring liquid nitrogen on your hands or touching a very cold surface, so you need to be careful about freezing burns. Finally, in some microscopes, the liquid nitrogen tank is placed pretty high in, on the microscope. So sometimes we see people climbing ladders or even standing up on the desktop of the electron microscope pouring the liquid nitrogen into the doers. And so be careful not to fall or bump your head. This concludes part one. Currents, coils, knobs, and names. The basic anatomy of an electron microscope.